Okay. I will call to order the workshop agenda review meeting of September 25th, 2018. Welcome to the citizens of Clay County. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend today's school board meeting. This meeting is our opportunity as your elected representatives to collaborate openly and make decisions that will decide the future direction of our public schools and the education of our children here in Clay County. This will, there will be an opportunity for the public to ask questions at the end of the workshop presentation. Your participation is welcomed and appreciated. And I would like the record to reflect that Mrs. Sutterdip was not able to be with us this morning. She's at a very important meeting with her spouse. So we miss her, but I'm sure that she has reviewed the agenda with Mr. Davis and we'll go be well prepared for our meeting. Um, so the only thing on our agenda this morning is the draft agenda review for the regular meeting on October 4th, 2018. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. All right, so uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Ready to rock and roll for October's meeting, October 4th. So we have a recognition with Tools for Schools event for the Clay County Education Foundation. Then we'll transition to presenters. We have CTE that will talk about the great things we're doing in, uh, with the industry certifications with our students. We'll transition to, um, I think that's uh, the National Builders Association. We'll talk about the National Careers in the Construction Month. And then we have an update presentation from the Clay County Growth and Development and B District staff just talking about where we are from a county perspective and how we will we'll see our you know 15 year growth model coming up. As Which a school is going to do our showcase, uh, like us, very junior. Thank you, ma'am. We need to limit job. those. So I have to just make a comment about this. We've got recognitions and then three presentations and then a school showcase. And I've gotten some complaints that the first hour of our meeting is just too long of everything and that you know it's great to have the, the awards of course and recognitions and a presentation but three presentations is a lot and then a school showcase that's supposed to be five minutes is more like 12 to 15 so we need to I think we need to yep. look at maybe limiting you know still have some of it but not quite as much I will make certain that schools are really in seeing four or five minutes. We tell them to coach them, we review the-, the You, uh, you had said that last year, that you told some it. of the- Yeah, the last year. It's, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard not, it's hard to limit yeah, when you're- Yeah, it's great because- Boasting your school They are, and, and, and we want to hear it. Yeah. But um, it's a lot. The first hour of our meeting is pretty much all of that. Yes, so. ma'am, I'll, I'll have them trim it down. All right, C, C1 minutes for, this is our minutes for board workshop on the August 27th and regular school board meeting on August the 6th. C2 is the personnel consent agenda. The only thing that's on this that, uh, that I want to bring it to your attention would be a position that we are, we're asking to revise a job description from director of operations to director of operations, the safety and security. Mm -hmm. As of now, we know that we have one individual that's taken on so much work related to uh, vandalism, but our utility, energy, shelters, custodial services, um, pest control, uh, running the you know, small engine shop, but now we've also added security and a number of individuals under this, um, uh, under this uh, personnel. So this would be moving from a director three to a director one with taking on a, you know, 30 plus more um, individuals underneath or underneath uh, this individual's scope of work. That's it, I have that. Uh, C3 is the school affiliation agreement with the Penny Retirement Community. This is all about our CTE health science students uh, at, at Clay High School. This is where they go and they have clinical hours at their hospital in order to uh, to enhance their knowledge and their skill set and prepare for their, uh, you know, uh, CNA certification. <coughs> Trying to get them in, get them rolling. C4 is the parent liaison services agreement for, it's a two-year agreement. It's required by IDEA every, every year. And uh, this is, uh, we will be continuing our partnership and two-year agreement with Jill Mc is it Macleay? Macleay, I always say right now. She has been with us for I think around six years, and this is a two-year agreement. She does a great job with providing the supports and liaison with our parents to make sure that they match up services and supports. And this individual has been with us, continue to do good work. This is funded out of IDA as well. 
C5 is First Coast Mobile Audiology Services Agreement. This is a one-year agreement. Uh, this is the, this individual. This is First Coast Mobile has been with us since 2006. This is about audio services uh, for our kids. It's OS screener for our ESC students, especially in the elementary model. This is where this is required by statute as well that we have this under our uh, IDA funding. This is where we look to find assistance with hearing aids, with any FM systems, and really look to see if we can really have uh, any audio, um, you know, consultation for, for our parents and for our students as well. C6 is another requirement by IDA, is to make sure that we have interpreter services for our, our agreement for our students as well. This is a one-year agreement. Uh, we are going with Alonzo Sign Language Interpreting. This, uh, they have been with us since uh, 2011. This is where they continue to make certain that we provide the services to our students based on their, their needs. How many students are? Currently there are six, but yes. we typically have anywhere to eight or nine during the course of the year. C7. This is a this is an agreement with Keystone Behavior Pediatric Independent Contractor Services. This is um, where we have uh, one or two students annually that may need additional educational experience that has greater uh, in, in supports and interventions for our students. This is where they have, will have better um, you know, behavior management uh, skills to help them with compliance, self self help uh, skills, and also uh, making certain that uh, they or being successful every single day that we may not have the one-on-one -on -one experiences and skill sets to do. This is once again paid through IDA. Anything you want? Yeah, it's um, quite, a, quite a challenging youngster. So we need and, that support. And I will say openly this is where we, we have potentially had some issues in the past but those have all been removed. Yeah, they separated that person from their company, didn't they? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Thank you all for helping us with that. C8 is out of county travel for K 12 uh, academics. You see, we have filled the plate <coughs> with a number of activities. We just want to get it on the, uh, on the books as early as we can. This is you'll see NJROTC, you'll see vet and assistant classes, FFA, you'll see wrestling, you'll see softball, volleyball, band, color guard, golf. It's a lot. And uh, a lot of our kids go on to compete out, outside in the, in the state, and, and we're excited for them to be able to do so. so pretty heavy but we want to be up front as often as we can. C9. C9 is the Orange Park Medical Partner Agreement. Every year they continue to support a number of initiatives within our school district. This year it's a $26,000 donation to our school district which helps a number of activities within our organization. This will go and fund Math Field Day. This will go and fund uh, you know the Rotary Science and Engineer uh, Fair. It will look at STEM initiatives. It provides field trips for elementary students uh, to go to the hospital. It will. Um, it helps with track meets. So they do a good job with us. And this is a identified the twenty-six thousand dollars broken up completely um, within within this agreement. I was invited to go on one of the field trips to the hospital. Hi. Where they X-rayed the bear. Oh yeah, they, yeah. Every second grader got a bear to take home. Yeah, it was really the cool. cutest thing. They actually got to go through you know the pediatric ward and going up. Uh, they had one hospital room that the kids got to go in and see. And it was it was really nice. I was they, impressed with it. They do a really good job. Really good job. They do an excellent job, and they we use that money in so many different ways. So many. We make that. I mean that when it yeah. comes down to each of those, that's. Yeah. It's a, it's and this has been ongoing for years. Mm -hmm. Orange Park Medical yes. Center has been partnering with us since before I even got on the board. Yes, ma'am. We're fortunate for the partnerships because it really grows legs to so many different um, events and, and activities for our kids. C10 is approval for advertising revisions to the school board policy for medication for students. One of the biggest changes is the administration of medical marijuana. In this, uh, in this, uh, I believe it was in 2017, we were asked to revise our policy. We are getting to a part where we have been working, uh, Mr. Daggett has worked with a number and staff as well, with a number of um, you know, school districts throughout the state to make certain that we have a clean uh, procedure or policy that, that addresses this uh, you know, uh, in a uh, professional and careful manner. For us, we're really going to make certain that uh, we have to permit the usage of, med of medical marijuana. However, we will, um, we will not maintain, we will not store, we will not administer medical mar marijuana at any point in time. We will make sure the schools identify a safe location and that and it must be administered by the individual that has the registered card that they have to provide for validation that they can actually administer it. 
and they have to have, this is a registration that the caregiver or the parent will have to go to the state in order to obtain and um, our job at the school level is to make sure that we identify a safe place a time and a low and, and a uh, in the manner in which it's administered in no way shape or form is this this it can it means it has to be a non-smokable uh, product in the sense that it may be an oil it may be a patch or it may be an edible product so we're just cleaning up our policy to make certain that um, that we are prepared for 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 this movement are students allowed to self-administer um mr dagana no um they're, they're not so there has really to be a the policy limit. the policy applies to uh students who require administration by others so that's what we're doing and this was said a year ago C11 right, uh, sir just whatever you want to go so, so the statutory shall do <clears throat> shall has been there since 2017 but all districts had awaited um, rulemaking and rules to be made by both DOH and DOE and we were advised not so long ago not to expect those so that's where uh, school board attorneys have now begun the conversations with the yeah C11 has proposed allocation changes. If you see the first five, um, the first five are all based on uh, adding, uh, based on schools uh, staff allocation model. They hit certain thresholds with the number of students since we're adding teachers. You see we're adding counselors a threshold. We even at one school picked up an, uh, an administrator based on the model. I'd love to say, hey, I'd love to save money, but the model's a model. We will make sure that we protect it and we follow it. Um, the, re the remaining of the general funding is a, um, you see that there's a, a, a shift with um, school board attorney, uh, administrative secretary. I still have an issue with that. When we, when we hired Mr. Daggett and we appointed a secretary, we were very clear as a board that it was to be an administrative secretary and not an executive secretary at that price. And so I have an issue with this one. I'm probably the only one in the room that does, but I do have an issue with this, so. I mean, if we want to go all the way and hire a paralegal, then we should be hiring a paralegal that has the qualifications to do. Yes, ma'am. Take it for the will, of, you know, or we ought to just direct me in this work. Um, I'll keep going. You can stop me when you need to. Uh, we have uh, we have a reduction of an ESE um, a gifted teacher. We have, as you see, we are making adjustments from accountant assistance to a program, a capital program accountant to help in um, uh, Dr. Dr. Kemp's shop. Uh, you'll see that we will we will be adding some um, some lab assistants at uh, Orange Park Junior High School to uh, to with SAI funding. And then we have some federal funding that's all linked around uh, adding social worker, cafeteria assistance where there's needs, and then um, some additional work for um, uh, band adding hours for band driver through food nutrition, which they continue to be self-funding. Uh, we do a good job. See, yeah, the only thing I hear on I wish I, the ahead, cafeteria yeah. thing made me think of it mm -hmm. is that I keep hearing that the food truck runs out of food way too fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what? I've gotten that too. Saying, <laughs> I I out say, they're yeah. so I excited about it. Yeah. I got to tell you the yeah. advice here. It, it is. <laughs> I mean, so we walk up. I'm not sure who was with me. I think Wesley may have been with me. We go to Ridgeview, and uh, the food truck's there. The bell just rings, and they are sprinting. To the the van or the, or the truck. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're like, we're like, what's going on here? We're like, oh my goodness. We get there and they just get hammered. Mm -hmm. I mean, what an attractive, you know. Yeah. And Wesley asked me and Addison, do we need more? I said, yes, we do need more. But I mean, we have four people in that truck cooking, making it happen. And uh, everywhere I go, they rave about the food. But I'll see what we can do. Or maybe they could vary because you know most of the high right. schools have different, like four or five different mm -hmm. lunch times. So maybe right. they could open up. Yeah. You know, like today yeah. we're only going to open for this lunch. C and D lunch gotcha. or something. Maybe yeah. then spread yeah. it around a little more. And it validates that the yeah. intent of yeah. that effort is definitely working. I mean, I don't know why my diet shakes aren't working, but the pork and the wings <laughs> <fries, laughs> are awesome. So they are so good. <laughs> 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 cheesy fries. 
I'm just, I, and they're meeting yeah. nutritional. I'm just telling y'all, give it a shot. You'll know why the line is uh, You know, for me, I, I you know, I never eat, but I had to eat. I had to taste it, and uh, you know, and I think Wesley can can confirm the pork nacho fries. They were they were really good, were they? He said he was full, good eat for two days, and. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you eat this? Like we need um, a second one. I, I know actually, we do. We need another food truck. Oh, really second do. one because of the demand. Oh, yeah. so the, one, we, the one we emulated, the district we emulated on this actually purchased a second one. Yeah. Because of the one? demand of and I mean, you just see it. I mean, if we could have it on, you know, two or three sites a day, it, it would just, you see the, food, you know, nutrition's going up. It's a, it's a really cool offering and it's exciting. So can't wait for it to get to some football games, you know. Well, maybe. Anything to keep teenagers engaged oh, yeah. right. and excited about, yes, you know, you know, Ridgeview High School used to have out in their courtyard, um, like the hot dog truck and, right. you know, different <laughs> centers you could go to outside, get whatever was yes, prepared and then sit out there and, and actually, you know, enjoy lunch out there. So, the nurse and me. How <laughs> <laughs> are we doing? The board cheese fries? <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, I know we have regulations on our, um, what we can serve. Yeah. It's all nutritional values, Ms. Cajaza. That's, so, that's all the nutritional value. And we have to follow that with mm -hmm. the food mm -hmm. Federal federal requirement. Okay. And somehow pork cheese fries. I don't know. <laughs> it's like organic white cheddar It's, it's the month's worth of <laughs> That was one of the mini options. Value. You had not taco salad. Yeah. Listen, you had I can done. tell you what line I'd be in. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's not that I'd say I'd go that. I'll but. make certain food yeah. right here that we don't have, have funnel cakes. Oh, we have fried butter. That's not fair. I just get so many parents and students who complain to me about the options that they have yes, in the school lunch line. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if we can expand that into yes, the cafeteria. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. There's some things I want to do right. in the future. Share your recipes. Don't <laughs> 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 All right. All right, see, what did you say? Sauce? Secret sauce. <laughs> C12 is a bid to be awarded. This is for our, um, our laser printers, our toners, our maintenance on uh, all these products. And originally we, we were with uh, Sunprint. We were going to transition to go with toner type. Uh, after half, you know, after, um, you know, we had some, some challenges in this, um, in, in, in this uh, movement. But however, we had uh, great representation to help us uh, get at the table to really find a better settlement for us to now we'll be moving forward with some print and toner type Ooh. at a uh, better price uh, to our to our school district after, after everyone's sitting at the same table to define our needs so we'll be moving forward with a joint agreement which is a three-year agreement for our printers and our toner have areas. we corrected our problem out at um, the new school uh, they will be on site on October the 2nd Ooh. so that will be October 2nd Anything else you'd like to talk to? <coughs> no, unless the board has a question of me. Yeah. Printers, printers, printers. So, well, if you so don't know this, printers are in it. Sorry. Yes, I was right. just going to ask, so the sun print printers will stay in the classrooms? Certain ones. Um, okay. Brody, can you elaborate on the ones that will be staying versus the ones that will go to the tone of the type? So 167 of sun print legacy printers will stay until they kind of fall off right. the wagon right. and then they'll be replaced by Tonatype. I just remember going through the process of changing all the printers a few years ago and it's going to be a patiently process. and I thought, uh, <laughs> I I, bless you. <laughs> Brady does Thank a great job. She does. She does. She does. All right, C13 is a bid renewal as well. It's a one-year renewal for our covered walkway to our school district. This has been uh, journeyed out and it will be, it has been awarded to F&G Construction. Uh, to a $250,000 ceiling and um, so we'll continue to identify this is just identifying if we actually have needs and being able to move forward uh, to make sure we have total walkways for kids. C14 is a district print center equipment refresh. Uh, we've had some equipment in, in that uh, area for a long long time and you would not I mean we don't have a color printer in there but we're a print center mm -hmm. so, so are we reactivating the print center because you know when we had it before mm -hmm. I mean we did so much you know and it was so the cost savings were great and then 
somehow or another we went to shutting it down. And, right. You know, we never really got it. to the point of shutting down. Right. But they're not doing so, the, the volume of stuff they used to. Right. So this opportunity here that arise, we, um, we felt that it would be a good time now to continue keeping the print center operating as well as bringing in the color printer option. We're hoping that by bringing that in, the schools will be able to save, you know, additional dollars versus going out to mm -hmm. Office Depot or uh -huh. Max, then we can well, we're actually hire those people back because we actually move people around at the time. Right. So how well, many you know, do you expect? Well, I, I'm not sure. We haven't really done the uh, look. We haven't did uh, looked at that, but we will possibly be looking at that depending on the volume. Oh, yeah, Again, the schools are so used to getting things so quickly right. regardless of price. So depending on you know the um, the marketing that we do outside, sending the schools the information, letting them know that a color printer is available, we have more availability to, to meet their demands. Um, at that point we might be I might be bringing a request to Mr. Yeah. Davis to bring to the That's board. a great idea. So we even just want to start with the long range right. things, knowing they need something yeah. in a month. Right. Send it in because we know it won't be done in three days. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Exactly. yeah. I remember the reason we went away was they just couldn't they meet the could, needs. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. so it was not self-sustaining. Well, and the color was, was an issue right. too. Well, the goal is to try to make it self-sustaining. Right. right now, it's not. So you know. Well, the timing of it. I mean, I would just. We used to put all of our bids in, or our requests in, in right. June, right. and they would sit and wait until July 1st, right. Right. and then start rolling out, but it was yeah. it was like, okay, we have to get it all done and ready right. to go. Yeah. I think if we can plan properly, that we can have that print shop working yeah. constantly throughout the sure. year, that they we have to staff it. Because right. we actually did have, didn't we have people working in the evenings? Yes. It was I had a split shift you where they would work in the morning and in the right. evenings, trying round the clock, trying to, especially around June, oh, July, absolutely. trying yeah, to meet the demands of opening <laughs> school. So, you know, we're just trying to, you know, bring in better equipment, more efficient right. equipment so that the downtime wouldn't be as so, much. So, and did by share. So once we, you know, my big thing is, is that I hate, we had to continue to go out for. I don't understand why we don't have a color printer. That's the first thing. We yeah. should be sophisticated to have it. So, we'll do, as we open this up and uh, and we get moving, we'll determine our actual needs for employees. If we whether it's a shift in employees in the organization or it's an ad, if we actually need it. So we'll, we'll do a uh, continuous volume review every month to determine where we are. But this will help us do schools with graduation flyers, presentations, uh, graduation certificates, those are the many things we can do with it. Mr. Davis. Yes, sir. Also, it's a, it's a great time to upgrade uh, for that department anyway as we work towards moving the print center from where it is on the raised floor, which we've had to repair. So we're in the process now of, of uh, getting the new print center ready. So it's a great time to upgrade and kind of get rid of the old donkey and a rope, you know, that we've been working from some of those old, old, old machines and get them working the right way so um, it's a great joint effort with uh, business affairs to get it done and just to add through negotiations Bertie did an excellent job um, with uh, the negotiations to where we're paying the same price awesome. so I'm getting a new color Sweet. frame and you all thank you Bertie new, new um, thank you. equipment <laughs> brand new equipment so I think we've, she's done an excellent job thank you Bertie. all right C15 is pre-qualifications for contractors which comes on a monthly basis C16 is final completion of Middleburg Elementary School restroom renovation. Sorry to close out some. Does everybody notice what's not in this category? Yeah. 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 I thought about putting it in there just to make it feel better. Yeah, we just wanted to do it. We, we, we took it off when Miss Stutter said she wasn't coming. <laughs> <laughs> C17 is completion of Orange Park Elementary kitchen renovation as well. C18 is a final final completion of Discovery Oaks Elementary School Y. C19 is just grant uh, you know right away easement to um, to play electric, so they can really have access to um, to our parcel. We need to have there's two portables at uh, the Middleburg Transportation that we need to work through so they can put a I believe it's going to be a power pole up yes, to give access to make sure that they are having the services to those um, overhead the services and access to a transformer for that they can be functional. SSO leads, the leads, right. safety office. A C20 
It is change order for Orange Park Elementary Kitchen Renovation. This is an eight hundred and fifty-five dollars savings for uh, from uh, tax sales. Sales tax, sorry. D1 is Human Resources Special Action. Not as of right now, but still have some time. D2 is a public hearing for the, uh, you know, for the uh, amendment of 2.36, which is a firearm chemical weapons policy. I think we're doing record time. I know, it's pretty good. Wow. You've been trying to be yeah. good. Pretty good, love it. Does anyone from the audience have any questions? Wesley? <laughs> All eyes are on you. School board. <laughs> School board attorney? Yes. Uh, um, one of the things that we were trying to do, uh, we, the uh, board chair and I, were to push forward again on our policy development uh, and, and workshops. Um, I just want to remind you, you left off in section one. I'm pretty sure we can finish the balance of section one, um, probably in one or maybe two uh, sessions. And the plan was to hopefully skip to um, the HR disciplinary and administrative hearing uh, section. And then uh, to consider the risk management policies, I had given the board uh, model policies on risk management committee, you know, the establishment, how it works, and so on and so forth. Um, I urge the, uh, all the board members to take a uh, look at that. And I'm thinking uh, that uh, the board chair you know, maybe reaching out uh, perhaps at the next meeting, uh, uh, looking at calendars and seeing if we can't schedule something uh, in the coming uh, weeks. Okay. Thank you. I skipped over the superintendent. I apologize. No, ma'am. I'm good to go. I'm just, okay. We're just in, you know, in limiting classrooms and trying to make sure we have rigorous activities in every single classroom and having greater supports for our schools. We're doing a number of calibration walks to, to better support. So, uh, you know, things are going well. Well, last night was the first meeting we had for the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. 16 yeah. students was awesome. Saw that. Very highly intelligent students motivated to, to make it a difference. So um, look forward to preparing them uh, to be able to present to the board and talk about the things that we're doing and trying to accomplish. First time ever in play. So, um, you know, really excited about it. Unless he was there as well. I recognized one or two of the names of the students that I saw just on their name placards. Yes, ma'am. And I know that you will be getting feedback yes, from those students. Yes, that's it. It's a <laughs> in, highly intelligent in involved fifth, group. In fifth grade, they definitely right. gave feedback. About yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> they worked hard last you night. So, and they are uh, good good We made it at the TCC and uh, had a nice so forum. I had a professional, they had name placards. We had, a, had an agenda and it was very, I mean, it was rigorous for an hour 15 minutes so they may did a good I, job. May I ask how did you select those students or how were those students selected? Yeah so it was a um, uh, we opened the application process online we pushed it out through all social media outlets and they had to answer a number of questions in their application why they want to be a part of it what they were involved in outside of school what were their academics and uh, you know achievements what did they accomplish outside of academics and we did a screening process and we had around close to 70 applicants apply and then after we, we narrowed down with a committee down to around 35 to 38 individuals that we interviewed, and we took that and cut that in half and went close to 16 applicants. So mm -hmm. they had to interview, and it was good. So Did, it, and do they represent most of the junior the, highs and high schools? They, they, well, I say this, you know, I thought about making certain that I represent every single area and we wanted to. But I honestly selected the best students who were qualified okay. to do it. So we have every high school is, um, is on there except for one. Okay. Uh, and that was just honestly due to the number of applicants. You know, I guess they missed the deadline or whatever. And then it, the junior high school is, is you have a split. So sure. we, we have one school that has, I mean, like Asbury Junior High School, I think mm -hmm. has two or three. But they're not really highly split. They did a really good job, and I couldn't tell them no. Mm -hmm. So but we tried to make sure that we had representation. We got a lot of areas covered. So. How long is the commitment? The commitment's for one calendar year, one so they got ten so months of meetings. Year, yes, ma'am, and we will name a chair and a vice chair. So uh, the chair will be a senior. So there's five seniors, so they have to present to the entire group, and they will anonymously select. And then we have two juniors on the committee, and they will have to present as well for the vice chair. Okay. 
So we only do that for her because they have so many experiences to go through and, mm -hmm. and they can teach the and they can teach the others. Nice. But we have a good cohort, so Great. look forward to moving. That seems to be, to be a trend. I saw the sheriff is going to have a student advisory council and oh, yeah. Houston Heights City Council passed and they have one. Do they? Uh, they have a mayor's council and and there's five seniors that this year they got started late. This is through the League of Cities, right. sponsored through the League of Cities, and so, and they are going uh, very like they have to follow the Sunshine right. Law, and all, which I mean, obviously they. You know, <laughs> there was a little bit of a concern about are we putting these kids in a position where you know they could be charged with a crime? <laughs> and Rich Commando is the uh, is the Keystone Heights City Attorney, and he said. No, you know they're not. They aren't taking an oath to, you know, uphold. Mm -hmm. so. But you think that started a trend? It's been excited for it. It's a good day's in play. That's it. School board members. I just want to reiterate that we. I would prefer that we do a workshop at some point to evaluate his salary, since that's part of our policy. I requested it at the end of the meeting, and I'll just keep saying it until we have a workshop. <laughs> so when we set up our dates for yeah, the workshops yeah. with the policy, that might be a good time to do it. Okay. I just have one thing, and I don't mean to be a wet blanket, but I do think the school board and the, the administration going forward is going to have to take a different approach to transportation to extracurricular activities mm -hmm. than the one we have, which is basically we're ostriches. Our heads are in the sand about this, and, and I don't want there to be a tragedy to cause our school district to change because it wasn't too long ago I think we've had a problem for at least three years and it wasn't too long ago that I remember the policy was and it still may be our school board policy that students couldn't transport even themselves to an extracurricular activity mm -hmm. school sanctioned um, much less a um, it's transport other students mm -hmm. and where we are today is if they can't get a bus for whatever reason, the students are told, get yourself to the game. And I have watched, I, I, I received a JV baseball schedule last year that said there's no buses for any game. Kids have to find their own way there. And I have watched five teenagers pile in an SUV with a 16 year old driver and their 14, 15, 16 year olds. And you know, I transported as many kids as I could, but we even have teachers who can't leave the elementary schools until what, 3.30, 3 or, oh, I don't know what the time, right. 3 o'clock or whatever. So even their kids are trying to find a way there. So I know there's all kinds of different things. I've had coaches say, can I get certified to drive a bus? And I know there's SESPA stuff. I just, I just every day pray that there's not a tragedy in this county that causes us to change our policies. And so yes, ma'am, and, and I appreciate it. I think that came up last year that I was mm -hmm. hearing about activity. So what we did differently than, I think this has been years and years of a problem that hadn't been addressed. And um, so coming in here and it, it, it was a part where we offered our internal, when an internal couldn't, didn't have the capacity to do it, what we did is we identified a number of vendors that they could, that every school has the option to call. So they have multiple vendors they can call. The issue is, is that they're not calling because the cost is greater than what we can do internally. So when, you know, coaches have to do a better job and athletic directors actually making certain, and we can make certain they do it, is take one of the number of options we gave them and, and, and if it's a, I think it's like a $10, $15, maybe $25 increase, uh, they need to take that increase and make sure it's safe. So we'll re, we will revisit that. I can get with Mr. Connor to do so along with Dr. Kemp. But they have a menu of options to do that so they don't have to transport now. Um, it's just come to the part where they, they don't like the cost of it. Right. And I, I wish that I could, could, could use everyone we have internal. It's just we just don't have the, uh, the number of drivers. Well, and it's hard, you know, when I have, I have had parents say to me, I see the white fleet with minivans driving around mm -hmm. and there's one person in it. Right. You know, and okay, but those have, those are here and they have to drive to come and check it out and take it right. back. So I don't know that we've made that as accessible, but I think even if, if they advertised it, parents would pay $10 more right. a season or whatever right. to have their right. kids safe. No, I agree. agree. Mm -hmm. I, and not be disrespectful, but the coaches, they have that money to 
to pay for that transportation. I think it's more an athletic director who's yeah, not wanting to money. come out of the budget. Okay, thing for your side. I was just going to say we're, we're looking into those options, but a lot of districts have had to actually look at a courageous decision. If you take a look at what people have done, when you look at, uh, we may have to look at flip flopping some start times from our from our program because honestly, the way we're doing it right now requires all of our buses to be available for routes, you know, after high school releases uh, for junior high and, and that mm -hmm. nature. So a lot of districts have flipped that. So therefore, all the buses are available uh, and high school gets out. When, when high school gets out, all the buses are available. So therefore, it kind of eliminates the extracurricular demand. Now, that's a conversation for the superintendent and the board for you guys to have. Um, but I think it. I think we're at the point with the desperate shortage of drivers and uh, the certification issues with drivers and the legal issues we could be facing to really start possibly looking at that um, for logistics. It would solve all the double back issues that we have to have when we're short drivers. It would also sh uh, solve the extracurricular problems. Mm -hmm. yeah, but other than that, because that's not on my your, my agenda to push and change. Correct. We we have a number of vendors that are ready to go. I, you know, I know, and I know it's not an easy solve. We had issue with field trips where um, some of the elementary schools, you know, the buses weren't available for right. them because right. we don't have drivers, and the but the you know, the rentals for a field trip are outrageous. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now you're, you know, the child's parents are paying ten or fifteen. Well, when you factor in the additional, it's now it's up to thirty. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't we can't do that for field trips. Yeah, I know it's not an easy solve. Right? It's just. But you know, one one car, tragic car accident with five teenagers, and we're going to be not to mention the loss of yes, those precious. But, Absolutely. Right. Yes, anyway, thank you. Anything else? Okay, we're adjourned. All right, thank you.